With the release of the iPhone 13 series, as it usually happens, some iPhones are no longer relevant, some iPhones got cheaper and the other ones are gone from the market. So today, you will know exactly which iPhone to pick after the iPhone 13 release. Do you need to upgrade your current iPhone and what if you want to switch from Android to iOS? What is the best option to start with in 2022? So this is hard, I know, but we'll go through this together. What's up, my name is Arthur Weiner and do you know what makes me happy? When someone I know buys an iPhone and says, thank you for the advice, you really saved me money and time. That warms my heart. But do you know what warms my heart even more? The like button so you can press it gently and enjoy the iPhone dance video. All right, so let's start off with a list of iPhones that you definitely should not buy in 2022 because you can find lots of controversial stores with new and used iPhones like iPhone 7 or iPhone 8. Besides, iPhone XS and iPhone XR may seem pretty attractive even though Apple do not sell them anymore. So which iPhones can we consider relevant in 2022? Simply go to apple.com and check the list of iPhone models compatible with iOS 15. And here you can see all the Face ID models starting from from the iPhone 10 and the Touch ID model starting from the first generation iPhone SE and finishing with the iPhone 8 and the second generation iPhone SE. But honestly, we should consider both iPhone SE generations as the previous generation because it has this old design and it's not so powerful to be frank. Now, all the iPhones with the notch, Apple considers as the new generation. Anyway, in general, we have 23 iPhone models that are relevant in 2022, but it doesn't make the choice easier. To make it easier, if phone calls and text messages is not the only thing you're gonna use your iPhone for and you wanna feel this fresh Apple magic, then I suggest you to skip all the previous generation iPhones. So all the iPhones before the iPhone 10, because the design is quite old and the chips are not so powerful though. I would rather buy an Android phone for the same price. In my opinion, the iPhones are not worth it in 2022. Only if you already have a previous generation iPhone then you know the best iPhone is the one you have but as the new one mm. and I recommend you to skip the second generation iPhone SE as well even though it's technically relevant and you can buy it on Apple store but don't buy it because besides the powerful enough chip the iPhone doesn't have anything else that stands out now we're left with only 15 iPhone models that can be considered purchase. I'm gonna go through each model, pointing out specific models that are doing best in 2022. Let's start with the iPhone 10, and I can't stop thinking about X-Men every time I pronounce it. I guess I'm a nerd. Even though this iPhone is pretty old, you can still see many people using it and other people asking, is it still a good iPhone today? Firstly, it catches your attention because of the design. You will have almost the same iOS experience as you do with the latest iPhone 13. Also the sleek design with rounded edges and two main cameras that by the way, doesn't look so big as the new ones. The iPhone 10 has almost six inch display, which is enough for watching videos, playing games, or whatever you're doing on it. The third reason to buy this phone is good hardware. It won't be the latest flagships, but the overall performance holds up pretty well because it supports all brand new games and it launches applications pretty fast. Also, don't forget that the iPhone 10 supports iOS 15 and I'm pretty sure for the next two to three years, it will be compatible with the future iOS updates. I really wanted to add the camera to the upsides, but considering what smartphone cameras are capable of in 20. 22 let's keep it in the just okay section you can get a xiaomi phone for like 350 to 400 dollars and get similar results and by the way what are the main competitors to the iphone 10 it's poco f3 mi 11 Lite, and redmi note 10 pro these smartphones are doing great in 2022 and i can say the same thing about the iphone 10s because you can make really good hardware and a set of cameras in the budget phones category so the obvious question arises do I need to upgrade from my, let's say, Redmi Note 10 Pro to the iPhone 10 or iPhone 10s? Here's the thing. If you just wanna check what iOS is all about, then definitely yes. But if you enjoy your Android experience, I think it's better to keep using Xiaomi. With the iPhone 10, you won't get a noticeable difference in performance or in photo quality, plus you might get some bonus problems. Keep in mind that it's hard to find a brand new iPhone 10 and a used iPhone 10 
comes in a not so perfect shape and a worn down battery. Therefore, I don't recommend buying a used iPhone 10 or iPhone XS. Actually, it's a bit different with the iPhone XR and a bit more complicated. Let me explain. At a first glance, it may seem like a really nice phone because it has a nice chip and in general the phone is doing great with everyday tasks. Plus, it has the nice 6.1 inch IPS display which we can easily call the golden mean in 2022. Despite the fact that it has just one camera, it shoots nice photos, supports HDR and records 4K 60 video. And it's easier to find a new one in stores so you're not risking with the used one as you probably will with the iPhone X or iPhone XS. So the iPhone XR looks decent in 2022. Good price and nice specs. If you're looking for the first iPhone to use in your experience, you want to know how it feels using the iPhone and you want to save money, then it's a good starting point. However, when it comes to price, here's what I've noticed. The point is that the brand new iPhone XR you can buy for about $450 US, while the same brand new iPhone 11 will cost you $499 US. So roughly, iPhone XR plus $50 will get you an iPhone 11. And that's what I recommend. Many reasons for that. Firstly, you get a more powerful chip that open apps quicker, snappier, and when it comes to benchmark testing, the difference is 113,000 points between the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11 to the benefit of the last one. So in everyday tasks, iPhone 11 will definitely outperform iPhone XR. Moreover, thanks to the extra power of this device and the better RAM, by the way, it will be relevant for a lot longer with the iOS updates in the upcoming years. In other words, Apple will support this device for years to come. Secondly, iPhone 11 has a better camera, at least a two times better camera because it has one more lens. And you don't need to be a professional photographer to notice the difference between the two. The colors are better and there are more details and shadows and highlights on the iPhone 11, so dynamic range is better. Especially in low light, the quality is so much better because in the iPhone XR there is no night mode and deep fusion. And don't forget that iPhone 11 has the wide-angle camera, which I think most of you will use pretty often. I think that wide-angle shots look so awesome. Yes, it's not the best wide-angle smartphone camera on the market, but it's still there. And what's not there is a telephoto lens. You can find it only in the Pro version of this phone, in my humble opinion. Buying the Pro version just because it has a telephoto lens is not worth it for most of us. I don't know about you, but I rarely use a telephoto lens. And thirdly, one more upside of the iPhone 11 to the iPhone XR is the battery life. It will last you about one hour more with the same usage. So with the price to quality ratio, iPhone 11 is the best option today. I think for this reason, many stores will drop the prices for their iPhone XRs. So if you wanna save money, I recommend you to wait when it happens. But if you have a budget and you want to upgrade your old iPhone, then iPhone 11 is a better option for sure. Actually, even for Android users who want to switch to iOS, I would recommend the iPhone 11 as well. Talking about iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, they don't seem too attractive in 2022 because the price is like the base iPhone 12 and they stand out just with the telephoto lens, a longer battery life and the screen size in the Max version. So some benefits there but you know what I'm trying to say. If you have 900 bucks laying around, just chilling there, then I think it's better to go with the base iPhone 12 model because you will get a faster chip, the OLED display, and it supports Dolby Vision. Here's the thing, if you have iPhone 11 or 10 right now and you're not happy with it, then it's a good time to upgrade to 12 because after the iPhone 13 release, it's cheaper now and it's not that big of a difference compared to the iPhone 13. Think about it, A14 Bionic is powerful enough to handle Genshin Impact like a beast. It's crazy fast while opening the apps and it's relatively quick at rendering videos. And compared to the A15 Bionic, the difference is not that big as with the previous models I've mentioned in this video. In Geekbench, iPhone 13 is just 600 points faster than the iPhone 12. And keep in mind that there is no promotion in the base iPhone 13. Therefore, 
If you already have an iPhone 12, then stop worrying about this, you have a great iPhone today. Even if you have a previous iPhone model like 10 or 11, it's also a good idea to go with 12. And it's also a good idea if you have an Android flagship and you want to switch to iOS. But if you have your eye on a Pro or Pro Max version, then I would recommend the 13 in this case. The reason is simple. The price is almost the same. And if you can afford a smartphone for that price, then it's definitely better to pay a little more and get the last model. Because with the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, you will get not only the more faster chip, but also ProMotion, improved battery life, macro, telephoto, and the ability to shoot in ProRes. So now, if you have a budget phone in the range of $250 to $300, then keep on using this phone, because switching it to a used iPhone is not an option, there is no reason to do this. But if you have an Android phone for about $600 and you want to switch to iOS, then it's better to go with the 10R as a low budget option or 11 as the best option. And as we've discussed earlier, go with iPhone 11, it's better, it has a better camera, it's faster. 11 Pro and Pro Max is good only if you really need a telephoto lens and a bigger screen. iPhone 12 is like a perfect option if you can pay a little extra and you're switching from a previous iPhone or from an Android flagship. I don't see any reason to pay more for the base 13 model because it's good only for its slightly improved camera and slightly improved battery life. And if you have even more money, then definitely go with the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max. And if you wanna learn more about smartphones and tech, then go ahead and click on one of these videos. I promise it will be interesting and see you in the next video.